Hello, my name is Kate Smith and I'm a survey manager for the Millennium Cohort Study and I'm going to be presenting um, some of the new features that are available for the Age 14 survey. So, um, as um, Vanessa has already showed you, the MCS involves um, many different um, instruments and we also include lots of different family members over time. And um, these different in instruments include interviews and self-completion questionnaires, and we also include uh, cognitive assessments and physical measurements, as well as one-off survey specific elements such as accelerometry and saliva sampling. And the specific content of each suite changes over time to be age specific and age appropriate. Um, and the age 14 content, which I'm going to be giving a lot more detail about in this presentation, um, is being the most complex um, survey to, that we've put together to date with the most um, different number of um, elements to it. Um, just to give you the heads up, we are actually um, developing the age 17 content at the moment, and we will be piloting um, the first round of that in April of this year. So the age 14 content um, included interviews with both resident parents um, and self-completion questionnaires, and um, but also is much more focused on the young person, the cohort member themselves. Um, they had their own questionnaire, which was a much more complex um, questionnaire that lasted 45 minutes. And a lot of content that we previously asked at previous sweeps to parents about the cohort member themselves, we actually asked the cohort member themselves at age 14. Uh, we also included cognitive assessments um, for the cohort member. There were two different cognitive assessments. And for the first time at age 14, we also carried out cognitive assessments with the parents as well. We took physical measurements for the cohort member, the, their height, weight and body fat. And we also collected for cohort members and any resident natural parents a saliva sample in order to extract DNA for the first time. And the cohort member was also asked to um, wear a, an activity monitor and carry out a time use record after the household visit. And I'll give more information about the different elements um, that were presented in this slide in the next few slides. So part of the um, MCS content has been um, to use widely used and validated scales. And at age 14, um, we included some psychological, developmental and health inventories to both the parents and the cohort members themselves. For the parents, we asked uh, the big five personality traits assessment. Um, it's also known as the five factor model. And it's a model based on common language descriptions of personality. And the five factors are openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. And they're often listed under the uh, acronym devotion or canoe. We also included the Kessler 6 um, for parents, which is a quantifier of non-specific psychological distress. And it consists of six questions about depressive and anxiety symptoms that a person uh, may have experienced in the last 30 days. Um, these were both asked of both parents. Um, we also asked a shortened um, version of the audit PC to parents, uh, which was a 10 item alcohol use disorders identification um, developed by the World Health Organization. And for um, the, about the cohort member, uh, we included the parent report of the strengths and difficulties questionnaire, which we have included at um, sweeps through. Um, Two, so that's ages three all the way up to age 11 and 14 as well. And it's, uh, it was devised by Robert Goodman, and it's a brief, brief behavioural screening questionnaire to assess child and adolescent mental health um, problems. And there are 25 items within that. For the cohort members themselves, we asked them um, a self-esteem scale, which is a shortened version of the Rosenberg self-esteem scale with five items. And we also asked that at age 11. And we also asked them a short version of the pubertal development scale, which is a self-report measure of pubertal status. Um, we also included the moods and feelings short version um, questionnaire, which is used to assess childhood and adolescent depression. And that was developed by Angold and Costello. 
and we asked them um, a few questions about um, to measure the healthiness of their diet, which we included as part of um, the Eating Choices Index. And more information of those will be included with the um, uh, documentation that goes with the data. We've been carrying out um, cognitive assessments with the children themselves since they were three, and the content of those have obviously um, changed over time to measure different domains of cognitive development, but also to be age appropriate. So at age three, they comprised a very basic cognitive assessment of their knowledge of things like colours, letters and sizes all the way up through to age 14 when we included two um, cognitive assessments, one of which was a word activity to look at their um, familiarity and knowledge of vocab. And we also did, uh, uh, from the CANTAB range of assessments, we included the Cambridge Gambling Task, which we presented to the cohort members as a decision-making activity which is to look at their innate risk taking. Um, we also included the Cambridge Gambling Task as part of the Age 11 survey as well. So the decision making task was presented um, on a tablet to the cohort members and they were invited to decide whether based on the number of coloured squares, how likely it would that a yellow token was under red or a blue um, square. And then once having decided that, they were invited to gamble or to risk a certain number of points on their decision. And then they were awarded further points to add to their total based on whether they were successful or not. And as I said, it's designed to measure their innate risk taking um, The word activity, which for the first time we also gave not only to cohort members themselves, but also to both resident parents as well, presented 20 words um, to, to the cohort members and their parents, um, which increased in difficulty. And they were given um, stimulus word on the left, and then from the five options on the right, they were asked to choose the word which uh, was best described stimulus word. Um, obviously, the young parent, parents, person and their parents were not given the same list of words in case they happened to be in the room with each other. So we presented uh, three different lists of 20 words. We've also been taking um, physical measurements and also taking some biological samples from the children since they were aged three as well. We have taken their height and weight measurements um, from the age of three all the way up to 14, and this will be continued at 17 as well. Um, but physical measurements have changed over time. We took waist circumference at age five and seven, and since the age 11, we've been using body fat scales to um, also take their body fat percentage as well as their weight. Or seven as well, we included body fat. Um, we've also, taken some biological samples at different um, specific surveys. At age three, we asked parents to swab the inside cheek of the cohort members in order to take a saliva sample to test the hygiene hypothesis, which looks at whether the child has developed um, immunities to common childhood infections. At age seven, we asked parents to send us shed milk teeth of the cohort members to look at stored lead samples within teeth, which are very good um, storers of lead in the uh, indicators of lead in the environment. And at age 14, um, for the very first time, we asked the cohort members and resident natural parents to give us a saliva sample um, for which we are extracting DNA and also genotyping as well. We have also, in addition to these physical measurements and samples, at age seven and at the age 14 survey, we also asked the cohort members to wear an activity monitor um, for a certain period after the household visit in order to look at physical activity and sedentary behaviour. So to give you some more um, detail about the saliva samples that we've taken. So as I said, the saliva samples were collected from cohort members and any resident biological natural parents. 
it's the first time um, in the world, actually, that a triad of DNA samples has been collected from two biological parents and children in a large scale study. So in such a large study, um, we used the interviewers uh, used Origin DNA kit in order to collect the saliva samples and then for storage and sending off to the labs. Um, the University of Bristol is collaborating with the MCS team here at CLS to store the samples and also extract the DNA. And the DNA extractions are going to be genotyped to, in order to allow for analysis of different genes and their relationship with areas such as health, well-being, growth and behaviour. Um, so to give you an indication, the uh, number of saliva samples collected from the cohort members themselves, the young people, we've got 9,172 from the main parents who in the vast majority of cases would be the biological mother in 9,053 cases and for qualifying second parents, in most cases, this will be the biological father of 4,854, giving us a grand total of over, tw over 23,000 um, saliva samples. The plans for the genotyping are underway, um, but we think it's going to take about one to two years to process and access uh, will be available in due course, but that via a special access committee. So this will be separate to any of the data um, access. So in addition, one of the other new elements for age 14 was the wearing of the activity monitor. Um, so all of the cohort members in Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland and uh, about sort of over four fifths of the uh, sample in England were asked to wear a wrist worn activity monitor for two randomly selected days after the household visit. And that comprised of one weekday and one weekend day. Um, and that was to look at to measure physical and sedentary activity. Uh, we used a, the wrist worn genie active accelerometer use, which is very like the one in the picture on the slide. And we've had um, 4,789 cohort members wore and returned an activity monitor. Uh, so we probably had more worn, but not necessarily returning and not necessarily extracting the data. In conjunction with the activity monitor, uh, we paired this up with a time use record, um, which was uh, used on the same sample uh, sample and day selection were the same so that every every cohort member was asked to wear an activity monitor was also asked to complete a time use record for the same days that they were selected to wear the activity monitor and this collected a full record of activities um, which collected on information on where they were who they were with and how much they liked the activity that they were doing we offered three different modes of data collection, an online data collection, which was available to use on a desktop, laptop or netbook. We also offered an app for completion on any Apple or Android smartphone or tablet. And for anybody who was unable or unwilling to complete the record online or via the app, we offered a third option, which was a paper version. And we had 4,851 Cohort members have completed one day of the time use record, and slightly fewer, just, just under 4,100 cohort members who completed the second day. And in total, we had nearly 9,000 total days of information for that part of the survey. So a very large part of the age 14 um, survey was the young person questionnaire, um, which, as I said, was much bigger than um, any any questionnaire that we'd given at age 11 or at age 7. So uh, rather than a paper questionnaire, which was given at 7 and 11, we, it was conducted as a computer aided self interview on the interviewer's tablet in the home. It took around 45 minutes of questionnaire time, although individual cohort members could take as long as they wanted to to complete it. Um, the, com the content was obviously designed to be age appropriate um, and also multidisciplinary and we, because they're age 14 and able to answer a lot more questions about themselves and also because of their cognitive stage, it included more complex question types, more routing, grids and filtering and also questions on more sensitive areas about their life. Um, we put a lot of effort into designing the instrument so that it would be as appealing as possible and to also um, be e easy to complete. 
we encourage we actually encourage the co-op members to take the tablet away with them and do it in private in their own room so that they knew that they weren't being um, seen any of the answers especially to any of the sensitive questions and the interviewer couldn't explain any of the questions or any of the terms and we also included design features within the serve the questionnaire to encourage honesty and to reassure them about the confidentiality of their answers so the the broad areas of the questionnaire content at age 14 were their free time activities so those outside school we also asked them questions on their views and also the values that they held their how they felt about school that they were doing at the moment and also their future um, about their identity question a lot of questions about their friends family and relationships and these included sensitive areas about embarking on romantic relationships and also any sexual experiences that they might have started um, under the title of things they may have might have done experienced or done included questioning on areas of antisocial behavior and also risky behavior so sort of smoking and drinking legal drugs and gambling but also antisocial behavior and wrongdoing and we broached the subjects of criminal activity and contact with the police um, and harassment that they may have conducted or may have experienced and also bullying that they may have perpetrated or experienced as a victim including questions about uh, their health their body and their feelings um, we included the the short mood and feelings questionnaire that i've already talked about that um, looked at um, areas of sort of well-being and also depression, but we also included questions on puberty and also dieting and a question on body image. And we asked some questions about their personality. Uh, we weren't able to include the ocean questionnaire at age 14 due to space, but we're hoping to include it at age 17. This gives an example of how the questionnaire was presented to the cohort members themselves on the um, on the screen and um, you can see that any question they were not given the immediate option but if they didn't they chose not to answer a question they were asked whether they wanted to code don't know or don't want to answer there's also one of the features in the top right hand of the screen was a hide the screen button which enabled them to hide um, to blank out the screen if anyone happened to walk into the room um, or they had to leave the tablet um, in order to go and do something else and we included a pro the progress bar down the right hand side which covered the areas of questions that we were asking them and hopefully so that they could see as they went through where they were in the questionnaire in addition to all the new topics and elements that we included at age 14, we also completely redesigned um, the survey and the website in order to appeal to teenagers. Um, we very much wanted to make the age 14 survey much more about them. And so before uh, we conducted the age 14 survey, we carried out a recontact exercise with the cohort members and sent out a participant pack, which was sent to them only. We included a letter addressed to them and including a pop-out membership card as they feel a member of the study a booklet which provided information about the study the impact that it had made and how findings have been used um, what happens to the data that's collected about them and information about us as the the um, mcs team here at cls we also gave them what we termed swag which was a key ring a travel card holder and a notebook um, and we completely redesigned the website for much more to be young person focused um, and we started using social media we set up a facebook um, page for them and also the use of twitter and we rebranded all of the materials to appeal to to them as teenagers and these are an example of the in, the information sheets that were given out for the age 14 survey in order to um, tell the cohort members what the survey was about and what it was that we wanted to do with them um, it was very much designed in a way that hopefully appealed to young people Okay, thank you very much. I've come to the end of my presentation and I'm happy to take any questions that you might have. Alice Forster has asked how well completed were data on romantic relationships and sexual experiences. 
Um, well, I think Vilma's more in a position having actually looked at the data. Uh, in the majority of the uh, uh, children that answered the question, answered these questions too. So they were part of the main questionnaire. They were not an, uh, another questionnaire related. So actually it was part of the main questionnaire. Uh, very few cases uh, refused the specific pa part of the questionnaire, but there were few. There were not as uh, the data are there and they're in good shape. <laughs> Um, Jenny Mags has asked, were day one and day two of the time use diary random as to weekday, weekend? Yes, so it, it was, they were, they were assigned one random weekday and one random weekend day. I hope that answers your question. Emily Frith has asked, does the Kessler 6 questionnaire cover the parents' mental health? Yes, it does. This was asked of the parents about their own mental health. Um, Siegfried to say, can you say what the cho eating choices index involves? Uh, there's a question about fruit consumption, um, whether they eat breakfast, um, what type of milk they drink, whether it's whole milk, skim milk or other types of milk, what type of bread they eat and how often. And I think there's a question about vegetables. Um, wouldn't the questionnaire disadvantage, Jane Thompson has asked whether the questionnaire disadvantaged children with poor literacy and was anything done to try to counteract this? Um, yes, we, um, we, there was an option for the interviewer to um, conduct the self-completion questionnaire at age 14. How, however, if that was the case, then the most sensitive questions were removed because uh, we really didn't feel this was appropriate or desirable um, so and it was there weren't many cases in which that was done as an option at all oh there was an earlier question left over from the previous um, presentation from ye it says when will the age 14 data i'm really sorry it's disappeared off the screen again when will the age 14 year data to be available to download by the end of March is the answer. Um, says how correlated Nassif has asked how correlated are the word activity scores with previous literacy based tests? Do they measure the same domain? Um, well, this this um, assessment was very much a vocab familiarity and vocab knowledge. It, the assessment, this word activity assessment we used was used with the BCS 70 cohort, so it would be correlated with that. How correlated it is with previous um, cognitive assessments used on MCS, I'm afraid I don't have the answer to that. Oh, I think Vanessa does. <laughs> yeah, um, just looking at the other, the verbal co cognitive scores from earlier, it's, it's around about point, point 0.3 um, or a high point 0.2. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, Alexander, I've asked, are samples of cognitive and other questionnaires available in the data set? Uh, well, the documentation that will accompany the data set will have, um, oh, grief, um, uh, will have um, questionnaires where they're available. With with regards to the Cambridge, um, the CanTab assessment, um, we don't obviously because they were done on a, on a tablet. Um, there, are, there are programs, so we can't actually give you documentation. We can only give example screens. Right. Dr. Kit Jones has sent quite a long question on, are, are we aware of the US Center for Disease Control's high school survey and the following finding? Some students identify themselves as heterosexual but report having sexual contact with only persons of the same sex. Whereas some students who identify themselves as gay, lesbian, have not had sexual contact or have had sexual contact with only persons of the opposite sex. This dissonance is well documented in other research and can be a normal part of the developmental process that occurs during adolescence. Does the CLS 14 cohort have any similar findings regarding dishonesty? Uh, sorry, dissonance, <laughs> ambiguity around gender and or sexuality. We actually, um, we pre-cognitively tested our questions on sexual um, activity uh, very a lot. Uh, we did focus groups and cognitive testing and two rounds of piloting 
before we developed our questions. And we discovered that at age 14, it was too sensitive a topic to ask about sexuality. And we had we we took advice and we did a lot of lot of work on it. And so we have asked everybody whether they have a boyfriend and everybody whether they have a girlfriend. And then we just ask questions about sexual experience that range from whether they have kissed somebody and held hands right up to whether they have actually had um, sexual intercourse. At age 17, we are asking a lot more questions about their actual how their gender identity and also their sexual identity. And so that is going to be very, very well covered at 17 and very well piloted as well. Um, what changes did you make to the pubertal developmental questionnaire in the 14 year compared to the 11 year one? Well, at age 11, we didn't ask the cohort members about puberty at all because we piloted it and it was an absolute no-no with 11-year-olds. Um, they really hated the idea of being asked questions about it, even at a self-completion level. Um, so we asked the parents um, whether, if they were a female cohort member, whether they had started their periods and if so, at what age. At age um, 14, we asked the cohort members themselves the pubertal developmental scale. Um, Olympia has asked what kind of educational data were collected. Um, well, we asked the parents um, about schools that the young person attending and any changes in schooling that they've had since the age of 11. Um, we also asked the cohort members themselves about how well they feel they're doing in the range of subjects at age 14 um, and also about whether um, the future as well, about whether they plan to go to university. Um, and we also asked the parents about whether they've had any meetings at school, um, specially arranged meetings, whether they've attended any um, uh, parents' evenings, and I think we also asked the cohort members themselves whether they've been expelled or excluded from school as well. 